days in the polls, the big fight over the debate date, who is heckling whom, and new moves on marriage equality. Our weekly political roundtable is back, and so are Republican consultant Jeanette Hoffman and Democratic consultant Steve Eskew. Welcome back to both of you. Good to have you as we get rolling into the final. We're with seven weeks, less than seven weeks to go before this election right now. How can we have this, you know, this blue state where you have one race so clear for the Democrats and one race so clear for the Republicans? Does it surprise you that the polls haven't gotten closer than they are, Steve? Well, they are getting closer. Um, you know, at least on the governor's 30 race. to 20. Well, not necessarily. You'll see what happens. It does tighten up. We have 700,000 more Democrats in New Jersey than Republicans do. So, um, but I think, uh, look, the, the real debate's going to be about affordability. It's going to be about whether people can afford to live in their homes or being taxed out to Delaware or the Carolinas and Florida. Uh, and, you know, people are concerned about uh, safety in their homes and after what happened this week in Washington. But it's so still a 20-point gap yeah. in a governor with a 60-some-odd point uh, oh, favorability rating. Still, for that governor on the same hand, though, we see that a lot of people are not particularly happy with his job performance, specifically when it comes to the economy and taxes. Well, I think, you know, look, G Governor Christie is, is doing w very well in the polls. And, you know, he is working in a bipartisan manner to address some of the really historic problems in New Jersey. With Property taxes have been a problem for about 20 years. And he really is the first leader to kind of take the issue, take the bull by the horns, and yeah, implement a 2% property tax. Yet. Well, still not. you know, look, property tax increases are at the lowest level than they have been in 20 years. Governor Christie uh, this week had a, a press conference announcing that he was signing the Economic Opportunities Act, which is going to bring more jobs back into the Garden State. It was a bipartisan effort. You know, the uh, jobs numbers that just came out Sounds show like unemployment. Sounds like endorsing the legislative well, leadership. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. The jobs numbers, right. 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 job okay. numbers came out, but we <laughs> ended up losing jobs for the second month in a row. Well, I think if you look at it holistically, unemployment, holistically? Is, at the, <laughs> <laughs> unemployment you, is at the yes. lowest <laughs> level since March of 2009. Look, when Governor Christie came in, I mean, we were losing 190,000 jobs. We've gained about 140,000 now. So I think, you know, look, he inherited a very, very uh, a fiscal nightmare, basically, in New Jersey, and he's working really hard to get us back on track, and that's why he enjoys such a big lead in the polls, and that's why Democrats in the legislature are running radio ads in the 14th District saying they worked with Governor Christie, they're cutting taxes, highest level of education aid. Do you have any concern about Republicans taking control of the legislature? Absolutely not, Mike. No way. First of all, you just heard Jeanette just basically give our campaign message for the Democratic legislative that leadership. That you worked with Governor Christie. And, and vice versa. And the governor is saying the same thing. So I don't understand how Tom Kane and John Brannock, who are both perfectly nice guys, um, you know, how they have a message to say, listen, we should take control of legislature. Let me tell you something, Mike. And I reminded Jeanette about this the other night. Um, the last time the Republicans had both houses of the legislature and the Republican governorship, um, they raided the pensions of cops, teachers, and firefighters to fund bigger government. They didn't cut spending. These guys spent like drunken sailors. And it got us in the mess that we're in today. So well, when I hear about Peter and Verso and some of those Democrats other folks who want to come back after what today. they gave us, they left come us on. with the tab. Right, Jeanette? Come no, on. no. I mean, the Corzine Democrats, Senator Buono, who's running for governor, was the budget chairwoman during the Corzine years of tax and spend and raising taxes 154 Corzine, times. Corzine cut so spending, but he's on the ballot this year. He's on the ballot this year. But you're going back. I mean, let's talk about when Democrats were in control. This state Democrats are in control of legislature. Let's talk about that. We've got major things. Done dragging together. them, kicking and Unlike screaming. Unlike Washington, which you saw today, what happened <laughs> with the shutdown uh, vote on the Obamacare thing, you know, we've actually worked together across party lines, maybe Jeanette forgets that, but, to solve big problems. And that's well, a good thing, not me, a bad thing. Let me thing. talk about, now that you brought me to two national issues, we have mm -hmm. Cory Booker as far ahead in the polls in his race as the governor is in his race. Yet why are Cory Booker supporters heckling Steve Lonigan on the streets of Newark? Oh, I'll tell you why. First of all, if today is any indicator as to why we need Cory Booker in the U.S. Senate, it's because of some of the Tea Party Republican extremists in Washington, like Steve Lonigan, who want to shut down the government. That yeah, means but, Hurricane but you feel, Sandy Aid. But you feel he deserves to be heckled for that. Really? Come on. Absolutely. Yeah. Sure. Well, A guy who has such extreme positions as saying that New Jersey folks who are victims of Hurricane Sandy shouldn't deserve aid. Um, that to go with the guys from Mississippi and Kentucky and Alabama who believe that New Jersey should be shut out. You know what? He deserves to be heckled for that. I put, Sorry. I put Steve Lonigan's record of lower taxes and cutting the size of government next to Cory Booker's record in Newark. You support his Anything. radical position Corey on abortion? Cory Booker's mayor in Newark, you support his record in Newark, has been unemployment of 15 percent. He wants to privatize Social Security and Medicare, Michael. In Newark. Do you support that, Jeanette? And guess what? Cory Booker is like a no-show mayor in I Newark. guess she I does support Steve privatizing Social Newark Security and Medicare. Cory Booker. <laughs> <laughs> Marriage equality. Mm -hmm. Suddenly, there's a possibility that this governor 
could have a veto overridden by the legislature. Republicans are now starting to say, we've changed our minds, we're going to support marriage equality, we will vote to override the governor. Does that surprise you? Uh, you know, I think the Republicans, uh, I think you're talking about Assemblyman O'Scanlan this week, who said right. he wasn't at, uh, the, when the legislature voted, he was actually at uh, his colleague Senator Beck's wedding in Jamaica, but he said he would have voted for it. And, you know, it doesn't surprise me. Uh, well, there are a lot of common sense Republicans here, you know, who, who think that government has no business in, in marriage. And But do you think it makes the governor look bad? No, I think, you know, the governor sticks up for his principles, sticks up for what he believes, and Republicans have the right to vote their conscience as well. So It only depends. Here, here's the funny thing. This only proves why we need a Democratic majority in the legislature in both houses, because the fact that this is news, that there's two Republicans and all of a sudden say they're for marriage equality in a state like New Jersey, what does that tell you? They don't get it. Uh, they really don't. And they're you not know, out of touch with the you mainstream know what it also of New tells Jersey. Me? It tells me time is up. But it's a good idea <laughs> and a good time to bring Roundtable back. We thank you both. Have a great weekend. Thank you, Michael. Thanks, Mike.